All right, folks, you know I'm feeling great on a Saturday morning because we're now 7-0 in our last seven board member tier package picks on my premium page. Absolutely crushing it in that package. We actually had the Red Sox plus $1.20 yesterday, and they took care of business 5-3. to three. That was against the Yankees, by the way. And if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video here today that you're watching right now that I actually like the best, well, I've got another board member tier package pick going off here today. You may want to think about checking that out. Now, guys, just a friendly reminder, if you do sign up for that package here today, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your membership. And of course, you know I can't forget about our chairman members. Got to give a big shout out to you because you folks cashed in on four more premium selections on my premium, excuse me, premium site yesterday. Another winning day for us. We once again had the Red Sox, Phillies, Tigers, and we also cashed in on the Nationals plus one and a half on the run line. They covered the one and a half, did not win the game, but they covered on the run line. And the only way you could have accessed every single premium selection of mine is to join my full access, all-inclusive chairman membership. Now, chairman members get access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And most days, you also get access to my chairman briefing absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. I do intend on doing one today. It's very rare we don't do one. We, we pretty much do one every single day, maybe once or twice a month. We might not be able to get to it because of early games, but I definitely intend on producing one here today. Now, folks, real quick, before we go ahead and move on, just want to, uh, I've, I've been rude. I haven't even introduced myself, so just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my Major League Baseball free pick video here today for Saturday, July 6th, 2024. Happy Saturday to you. Still July 4th weekend. I'm sure a uh, good amount of folks probably... Uh, at the beach, at the shore, you know, probably at Atlantic City, you know, swimming in that dirty water, losing your money, and uh, probably loving every <laughs> every second of it. But uh, once again, folks, my name is Brock Page. Uh, I've been doing free picks right here on YouTube since 20, uh, what was it, 2016, almost a decade. And once again, guys, we are now 7-0 and in our last seven board member tier package picks going into today and once again we've got another board member tier package play going off here today the site is patreon.com slash brock page with that folks let's go ahead and get into it got ourselves a nice full slate of games here today so let's go ahead and get started we're going to take a look at the red Sox at the yankees 105 eastern first pitch the yankees are the two dollar favorite at home totals nine runs garrett cole for New York, Josh Winkowski for Boston. And through 35 plus innings of work this year, the righty Winkowski's got a solid ERA of just 280. And of course, at the plate, the Red Sox are a top five hit producing lineup on the road. Connor Wong bats 316 along with 101 total bases. And Jaron Duran leads the lineup in hits. And they're facing Garrett Cole here today, who's got an ERA in the sixes after just 13 innings of work uh, has not been off to a great start and i'll tell you what out of their last 10 ball games the yankees got the outright w only twice you know we're seeing a lot of issues here guys not hustling guys kind of bickering guys yelling at other players showing them up on the mound uh it, like i said certainly struggling over the past handful of weeks now uh injury wise torres is uh questionable for the pinstripers there's another guy who showed a lack of hustle uh earlier in the week then we had volpe uh costing them a run not sprinting towards home and um costing the team a run on a fielder's choice but anyway uh torres is questionable for the pinstripers stanton's still out meanwhile for boston uh grissom's out for them now total wise the bosox held new york to just 3.9 runs a game in their last 10 gatherings they also saw three out of their last four Winkowski starts stay under the line. Give me the Red Sox, plus one and a half, under nine. 
Next game, Astros Twins, 2.10 p.m. East. Minnesota's minus a buck and a quarter, total seven and a half. Joe Ryan for the Twins, Hunter Brown for Houston. And uh, even though Brown's got a winning record on the uh, season here, it really hasn't been a, a dominant body of work. The righty's got himself an ERA in the fours along with a 1.33 whip. And I'll tell you what, as good as the Astros have been recently, they still play their worst baseball away from minute. Uh, they play their worst baseball away from Minute Maid Park. Uh, they still have a losing record when they bat first, and they're going to face Joe Ryan on the mound from Minnesota, who's got 110 strikeouts, .96 WHIP. Of course, at the dish, the Twins are a top five hit producing team at home in the American League. Jose Miranda hits 324 with an OPS just about in the 900s. And Carlos Correa is batting 307 with 132 total bases. Now, injury-wise, Karoloff and Lewis are still out for the Twins. Altuve is questionable for the Astros. <coughs> when it comes to the total, six out of Houston's last eight road games did get over the total. Meanwhile, the Twins went eight and two to the over in their last ten themselves. Give me the Twins minus a buck and a quarter, over seven and a half. Next game, Angels Cubs, two twenty Eastern first pitch. Chicago's minus a buck forty-five. Totals eight and a half. Kyle Hendricks for Chicago. Tyler Anderson for the Angels. And even though Anderson's had many good starts, uh, strikeouts are definitely down for the lefty. And he does have a losing record on the year. Now, the Angels currently find themselves 15 games under 500, and they've definitely performed poorly at the plate. They're now a bottom 10 run producing lineup in their travels. Mickey Moniak bats just $1.93. OPS in the 500s for Moniak. And Joe Adele, you know, this is a guy who uh, got a lot of, a, you know, not a lot, but considerable attention over the past couple of uh, seasons here. Well, this year he's hitting just 184, and he does not have a positive wins above replacement average. So maybe he's, maybe he's banged up. Maybe there's some injuries happening there, but uh, Adele not looking great. Now they're facing a Cubbies team on the other side who did get the W in their last two straight. They've, you know, they've done a decent job at the plate over the past handful of games. Uh, this lineup has scored 22 total runs over their last four contests. And most important, well, they're still perfect in their interleague home games. These guys are currently 6-0 against American League opponents at Wrigley Field. Now, total-wise, three out of Chicago's last four in the friendly confines got over the total. They're also 60% to the over in their last 10 at any location. Give me the Cubs minus 145 over eight and a half. Next game, Mets Pirates 405 East. The Mets are minus a buck 30, totals nine. David Peterson for New York, Bailey Falter for Pittsburgh. And uh, even though Falter's had numerous quality starts this year, the Bucks just don't want to win for him. He's got a losing four and six record, and uh, strikeouts are definitely down for the lefty. And a lot of that has to do with uh, poor plate appearances out of this lineup. The uh, Pirates are a bottom three run-producing team at home. I'll tell you what, they could be in more trouble here today when facing David Peterson. The New York lefties 3-0 and with an ERA in the threes. The Mets also pound the baseball in their travels. These guys lead the major leagues in run production away from home. Francisco Lindor has got the most hits in the clubhouse. Brandon Nimmo has got the most RBI. When it comes to the injury list, Starling Marte's still out for the Mets. Uh, Henry Davis inactive for Pittsburgh. Now three out of the Pirates' last four home games did get over the total. Meanwhile, New York went 9-1 to the over in their last 10. Keeping the Mets minus 130 over 9. Next contest, Cards, Nats, 405 East. Washington's minus a buck and a quarter, totals nine runs. Mackenzie Gore for Washington, Lance Lynn for St. Louis. And uh, Lynn definitely with a, uh, a nice body of work here this year. Uh, we're looking at 84 strikeouts and 87 plus innings. ERA of 359. Of course, as a team, the Cards did get the W in six out of their last nine. 
And they've done a solid job with Nationals pitching. They've scored 62 total runs in their last 10 gatherings with Washington. As far as this year is concerned, Brendan Donovan's got the most hits on the roster, Nolan Gorman with the most home runs. And they're going to face off against Mackenzie Gore, who's hit or miss. You know, I'm not going to completely uh, crap on the guy, but the lefty does have just a 6-7 and seven record on the year with a 1.37 whip. Now, at the dish, the Nationals are definitely having a tough time producing runs at home. They're in the bottom 10 in run production in their own stadium. Now, injury-wise, Joey Gallo's out for the Nats. Herrera and Newt Bar inactive for the Redbirds. When it comes to the total, three out of St. Louis's last four road games did get over the number. Meanwhile, Washington went 7-3 the over in their last 10. Give me the Cardinals plus 105 over 9. Next matchup, Rays, Rangers, 405 Eastern first pitch. Texas is the dollar twenty favorite at home. Totals eight runs. Andrew Heaney for the Rangers, Taj Bradley for Tampa Bay. And uh, don't let Bradley's record fool you. He has thrown well through 55-plus innings. The Reddy's got 72 strikeouts during that time span, along with a 1.12 whip. Now, I'll tell you what, as much as the Rays have struggled at the dish, they do tend to hit it well away from the trot. They're a top-ten hit-producing lineup on the road. Isak Paredes has the most homers and RBI on the roster. And Yandy Diaz has the most hits. And they're facing a 3-9 and nine Andrew Heaney, who's got an ERA in the fours himself. But even if, you know, Heaney throws well here today, he may not get much run support. The Rangers are a bottom five run producing team in their own building. Now injury wise, Josh Smith is questionable for the Rangers. Evan Carter still out. And three out of Texas's last four at Globe Life Field stayed under the total. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay is 7-3 of the... Uh, did I say uh, under? Yeah. Three out of the Rangers' last four at Globe Life Field stayed under the total. Uh, Tampa Bay 7-3 to the under in their last 10. Give me the Rays plus a dollar under eight. All right, next game, Orioles Athletics 407 East. Baltimore's a buck 75 on the road, totals nine runs. Cade Povich for the O's, Luis Medina for Oakland. And uh, Medina's just one and three on the year with an ERA close to five. But uh, even if Medina's good here today, he is backed by a bottom three run producing team. And I'll tell you what, that's certainly not going to be uh, good enough uh, when facing the Orioles. These guys score more uh, runs a game than any other roster in baseball. Gunnar Henderson's got the second most homers in the league, fifth highest OPS. And uh, Anthony Santander, he's uh, slapped 22 homers himself. Kind of, you know, Santander getting a little bit overshadowed, a uh, little bit overshadowed by a lot of big names for the O's, but 22 homers, good year so far for him. Second on the roster in runs scored. And I'll tell you what, out of Baltimore's last 10 gatherings with the A's, they average over 6.9 runs a game during that span. Now, injury-wise, Toro and Ruiz are out for the A's. And no real surprise here, seven out of those 10 head-to-head -head meetings I just mentioned got over the total. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of overs to go around. Now, the O's on the other side, they saw three out of their last five Cade Povich starts get over the line themselves. Give me Baltimore, minus one and a half, over nine. Next matchup, uh, kind of a... Uh, Toilet Bowl here, White Sox Marlins, 410 Eastern first pitch. Chicago's minus a buck 50, total seven. And I'll tell you what, what's what hasn't really been in the toilet bowl or in the gutter, these two starting pitchers. This is a good matchup here, uh, here today. We've got Garrett Crochet for Chicago, Yanni Chirinos for Miami. And uh, I'll tell you what, through 14 plus innings, the righty Chirinos, he's got an ERA in the threes. He's yet to record a loss. And as bad as they've been, well, these Marlins pitchers are racking up the strikeouts at Lone Depot Park. Not sure if it's tough to see there or what, but Miami's fanning over 9.3 batters per nine at home this year. And I'll tell you what, they're taking on the worst lineup of hitters in the major leagues. Of course, that's the White Sox. They're dead last in runs per game. Martin Maldonado hits just 101 on the year, OPS of 318. 
And of course, Andrew Benatendi bats just 191 with a negative 1.8 war. And I'll tell you what, as good as uh, starting pitcher Garrett Crochet's been on the hill, the Sox did take the loss in five out of his last seven starts. Now, injury-wise, Fletcher's still out for Chicago. Lopez inactive for Miami. When it comes to the total, the Marlins held Chicago to just 3.7 runs a game in their last 10 head-to-head -head gatherings. So once again, if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. Now, seven out of Chicago's last nine crochet starts fell under the line as well. Give me the Marlins plus one and a half under seven. Next game, Tigers-Reds, 410 Eastern first pitch. Cincinnati's minus $1.65, totals nine runs. Hunter Green for the Reds, Jack Flaherty for Detroit. And uh, I think Flaherty's efforts have uh, gone a bit overlooked. He's got a handful of wins along with an ERA in the low threes. And out of their last 10 gatherings with Cincinnati, the Tigers have done a, a good job with Cincy pitching. They scored 54 total runs during that time frame. And as good as starting pitcher Hunter Green's been for Cincy, well, he is backed by one of the worst hitting lineups in baseball. The Reds are currently averaging fewer hits a game at home than any other roster besides one. Ellie De La Cruz hits just 253 and has the most strikeouts in the majors. And I'll tell you what, Will Benson's right behind him with 109 strikeouts and a batting average of just 188. Now, out of Hunter Green's last three starts, the Reds took the loss in all three of those games, and they were actually shut out twice during that short stretch. When it comes to the injury list, Luke Maley's still out for the Reds. TJ Friedel inactive as well. Meanwhile, for Detroit, Kerry Carpenter and Javi Baez are still out for them. When it comes to the total, the Tigers have held Cincy to just 3.9 runs a game in their last 10 gatherings. Of course, four out of Detroit's last five, Jack Flaherty starts Stayed under the total as well. Give me Detroit plus one and a half, under nine. Next game, Giants Guardians, 410 Eastern first pitch. Cleveland's a buck and a quarter, total eight and a half. Logan Allen for the Guardians, Kyle Harrison for San Francisco. And even though Harrison's having a solid year, we have seen his whip creep up to a 1.33 course at the plate the Giants uh, just haven't been good enough on the road they average fewer hits a game while traveling than any other organization besides one and uh, they're definitely going to have to do better than that because Cleveland can uh, definitely score with the best of them these guys are a top three run scoring team at home Stephen Kwan bats 363 with an OPS in the 900s and David Fry bats 305 with an on-base percentage of 410. And uh, this is a Guardians team who's helped starting pitcher Logan Allen achieve that 8-4 record. Now, injury-wise, Will Brennan's out for the Guardians. Flores, Estrada, and Luciano still inactive for San Francisco. When it comes to the total, three out of the Guardians' last four contests at Progressive Field got over the line. They also went 60% to the over in their last 10 at any location. Give me Cleveland, minus a buck and a quarter, over eight and a half. All right, next matchup. It is going to be Blue Jays, Mariners, 410 p.m. East. Toronto's a buck 20 on the road here. Totals eight. Yariel Rodriguez for the Blue Jays. Emerson Hancock for uh, Seattle. And even though Hancock really hasn't been overly dominant himself, you know, personally, uh, these Mariner pitchers as a whole – they have been unhittable at home, so we should see a good outing out of him. Uh, the Mariners are allowing under 6.6 .6 hits a game in their own building. And because of that, they allow fewer runs a game at home than any other staff in the league. And they're facing a Toronto lineup who's definitely struggled hitting the baseball on the road this year themselves. The Blue Jays are in the bottom three in hits per game while traveling. Kevin Kiermeyer bats just 191 with an OPS in the 500s. And Alejandro Kirk bats just $1.99 with an OPS in the 500s as well. Uh, but even if they do get some base runners here today, starting pitcher Yariel Rodriguez, he's been lackluster at best. 0-3 record on the year, 1.54 whip. Now injury-wise, Justin Turner is questionable for the Jays. Uh, Connor Falefa's out. And five out of the Mariners' last seven home games did stay under the total. No real shock there. 
They're also 7-3 and three to the under in their last 10 at any location. Give me the Mariners plus a dollar under eight. All right, next matchup should be a good series here. Brewers, Dodgers, 715 East. The Dodgers are minus a buck 15, totals eight and a half. James Paxton for Los Angeles, Freddie Peralta for Milwaukee. And even though Peralta has been a strikeout machine, the Brewers have definitely struggled against Dodger pitching recently. As a matter of fact, out of their last 10 ball games against the Dodgers, Milwaukee averaged only 3.1 runs a game. As far as this season's concerned, well, Jake Bauer bats just 218 with 63 strikeouts. And Reese Hoskins has a negative uh, 0.2 wins above replacement average. They're facing James Paxson on the mound on the other side of things, and he's uh, given the Dodgers multiple opportunities to win this year. The lefty's 7-2 on the season through 75-plus innings. And of course, as a team, the Dodgers have a 622 win percentage against National League opponents at home. Shohei Otani has the most home runs in the National League, highest OPS average in the National League as well. Of course, Freddie Freeman's been walked 49 times as an OPS in the 900s. Now, injury-wise, Hayward and Betts are still out for the Dodgers. Sanchez, Ortiz, and Dunn, they're inactive for the Brewers. When it comes to the total, the Dodgers saw the overcash in their last four straight home games. They also went 7-3 to to the over in their last 10 at any location. Give me the Dodgers minus a buck 15, over eight and a half. Next game, little NL East action here. Phillies Braves, 715 East. Atlanta's a buck 20 at home, totals eight and a half. Spencer Schwellenbach for Atlanta. Ranger Suarez for Philadelphia. Now Suarez is 10 and 2 on the season with a .99 whip. And this Philly pitching staff has been very dominant this year. They're allowing fewer runs per nine than any other staff in baseball at the moment. But it ain't just pitching with Philadelphia. Uh, at the plate, the Phils have been equally as impressive. They're in the top five in runs per game. Alec Bones batting 300 on the nose with 70 RBI. And Trey Turner bats 341 with an OPS just about in the 900s. And they're facing a Braves club who lost six out of their last nine. They currently have a losing record in their divisional home games. And they definitely could be in trouble with Spencer Schwellenbach on the hill. He's just 1-4 with an ERA of 568. Now, injury-wise, Anderson and Harris are out for the Braves. Harper, Real Muto, and Schwarber inactive for the Phils. Uh, six out of the Braves' last seven contests at Truist Park did stay under the total. They're also 80% to the under in their last 10 at any location. Give me Philadelphia plus a dollar under eight and a half. Next game, Royals, Rockies, 9, 10 p.m. East. Kansas City's minus a buck 70 on the road here. Total seven and a half. Uh, I'm sorry, totals 10 and a half. Seth Lugo for the Royals. Austin Gomer for Colorado. And the lefty Gomer has uh, been a bit of a disaster this season. Uh, just a 1-5 record. Uh, I believe it's like close to 90 innings of work, and uh, he's recorded just one win. Uh, of course, ERA close to five. And this Colorado pitching staff is, well, they've been a disgrace all season long. They give up more runs a game than any other club in baseball. And they're going to have to face Bobby Witt Jr., who's batting three twenty one with the most RBI in the clubhouse. Now, Salvi Perez has the most homers on the roster as well. But uh, even if the Royals have problems getting base runners today, they've got one of the best in the game on the mound in Seth Lugo. He's looked great. Uh, the righty's 11-2 with an ERA of 217. Now Lugo also has 105 strikeouts and a 1.03 whip. Of course, injury-wise, Bryant and Beck are out for the Rockies. When it comes to the total, Colorado saw overs in four out of their last five Austin Gomer starts. Give me Kansas City minus a buck 70 over 10 and a half. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into our next and final breakdown for the video. It's going to be in that D backs Padres game. That'll be a 940 Eastern first pitch. San Diego's minus a buck and a quarter, total seven and a half. Matt Waldron for the pods, Brandon Fott for Arizona. And even though Fott's had some rough outings, uh, the D-backs still got the W in six out of their out of his last nine starts. 
And of course, at the plate, the D-backs have done a nice job producing runs on the road. They're in the top five in the National League in runs per game as the away team. Christian Walker's now got the fifth most homers in the majors, eighth most RBI. Uh, certainly impressive after a bit of a slow start. And of course, Jock Peterson's got an OPS in the 900s. Now, injury-wise, Cattell Marte is questionable for Arizona. Bogarts and Tatis are out for the pods. It comes to the total, San Diego saw their last four at Peco Park get over the line. They're also 7-3 and three to the over in their last 10 at any location. Now, Arizona on the other side, they went 80% to the over in their last 10 themselves. Give me the Diamondbacks, plus 105, over 7.5. And, and with that, folks, now it's time for our quick pick recap. Give me Boston, plus 1.5, under 9. Minnesota, minus a buck and a quarter, over 7.5. I'm 7-0, my last seven board member picks on my premium site. Cubs, minus 145, over 8.5. Mets, minus 130, over 9. Cardinals, plus 105, over 9 runs. Rays, plus a dollar, under 8. Orioles, minus 1.5, over 9. Marlins, plus 1.5, under 7. Tigers, plus 1.5, under 9 runs. Uh, Cleveland, minus a buck and a quarter, over 8.5. Mariners plus a dollar under eight. Dodgers minus a buck fifteen over eight and a half. Phillies plus a dollar under eight and a half runs. Royals minus a buck seventy over ten and a half. Give me the Diamondbacks plus one oh five over seven and a half runs. With that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium page. Now, if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock page. Just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. That's why I always tell folks that Chairman Package, it's a full access, all-inclusive membership. It gives you access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. As an added bonus, you'll occasionally get access to the chairman briefing absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. The reason why I don't say uh, I do that every day, because I don't. I do it typically like 28 out of 30 days. There might be a day or two where I don't do the briefing, but for the most part, we do that almost every single day. It's our chairman briefing. We make a video and break down each and every one of the premium selections. But anyway... Most importantly, I got to thank you uh, got to thank you for joining me right here on the uh, free video here today. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy uh, Saturday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium site at patreon.com/brockpage.